You guys awake? You awake? We're here? Okay. Whew. So, for what it's worth, we're, we're continuing to draw closer to the end of the liturgical cycle, the end of the liturgical year. So, this Advent is around the corner. So, the themes are all the themes of the ending of the Gospel of Matthew. And Luke takes up a lot of the same themes, and so does Mark. But the end of our Lord's public life, he knows what's coming, and he's really urging his listeners, and the Holy Spirit through the liturgy perhaps is urging us to prepare not for just the end of a year and the beginning, beginning of another year, but really for the end of life, the end of our, our time. Our time is running out. Our Lord is coming back for us. So we heard a few weeks ago the, the um, coming of the, the wedding feast, the invitations that were sent out, and we need to be ready for the invitation when it comes, and we need to be prepared and wearing the, white, the correct wedding garment or else be thrown out. Will it be, there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. That same message kind of gets repeated three and four times towards the end of the Gospels and towards the end of our Lord's public ministry. So he's really urging us and almost kind of, you know, not pulling any punches to try to get our attention. So I want to talk a little bit about the gospel today. For what it's worth, you hear at times where you look at creation and how mathematical it is, how ingenious the creator is. He's kind of a mathematician. He's kind of a scientist, part, you know, artist, etc. Today with the gospel, you could consider our Lord from the perspective of a businessman. Who's got money in the stock market? Anybody? Just a little bit? Nobody? Okay, well, good morning. All right, so some of us have money in the stock market. I don't. My dad knew that one way or the other. My dad is an investor, and he knew that one way or the other I was headed for poverty, so I chose it voluntarily. <laughs> um, but when it comes to investments, you know, it's somebody, a wealthy person, usually, or you have some sort of means to support others, and there's a project in front of you, and he wants, you want to see that project get off the ground. So you take something that is yours, and you invest it. You entrust it to that project or that company or that business that's getting off the ground, and you expect in return one day to receive a generous share or proportionate share in the fruits of that project. So for what it's worth, God is an investor, and you are both a project manager and the project. And our Lord looks at you, and he finds reason in both of us, you and me, to invest in us. And he puts, like he said in the parable, he gives to his servants all that he has. A talent was a very expensive, very high amount of, of money for what it's worth. And the, the master entrusts all of it to one five, to another two, and to the other guy one. But our Lord looks at each one of us. He says, you are worth it to me. I will invest in you. I have reason to believe that from your life I will receive great glory and more will come to know my love. For it's worth, I always say it a lot, but St. Irenaeus, right? God's glory is man fully alive. Each one of us coming to that fullness of the gifts he has given to us, that full development. So God has invested in you and in me. He's given you gifts, kind of like a parent who gives, you know, to the child, you know, the education, the housing, all these ways to develop the gifts that also the gifts themselves came from the parents, your DNA, your genes. Everything you have, Olivia, comes from mom and dad. It's just amazing. Everything. And they give you even the means to develop those gifts. Our Lord's kind of the same way, investing in each one of us with those gifts. So God has given you your talents. We have our human talents, and we can talk as well about spiritual talents. Olivia, what's one of your talents? Uh, dancing. dancing. Very good. Brady? Uh, jiu -jitsu. Jiu-jitsu. That's pretty good. I wish I could do jiu-jitsu. Go ahead. What's a talent? Come on. Studies. Sure. All right. Academics. We'll go with that. Go ahead. Jessica. Drawing, very good, lots of artists, awesome. Over here, any talent? What's a talent, huh? Soccer. Soccer, all right, soccer. You can, two for one, two for one, two for one. No, no talents, okay, we'll come back to you. All right, anybody else, talents? Talents, Father, don't come over here. What's your talent? Okay. Eating, oh, that's a good talent. That's a good tom talent. Thomas, go ahead. Baseball. Baseball, baseball. anybody else alive here? All right. Joseph, what's your talent? Cooking. Anything? Cooking. Building regulators. Very good. Very good. Jill, give it a shot. There we go. Baseball. Very good. Yeah, sure. Com very good. That's a good talent. Very competitive. What is it? Ballet. Awesome. Awesome. Gymnastics. Why not? All these gifts and so many other talents. And amazing. Wait, one more? Puppies. You should be like, oh, that's awesome. 
Yes, dealing with puppies. So yeah, these talents our Lord has given us, these human talents. He's also given us the, the I mean, I was, I was thinking about this for a while today. I got to say it three times. Sorry, Tansy. Tansy's heard this homily like at least twice. But anyway, the talents our Lord has given us, not to mention our intelligence, right? That gift. And our Lord is expecting fruits. That's why an education is important. That's why laziness is really bad. Because you've been given so much, and you just kind of let it fall by the wayside because I just don't feel like it. Whoa! So... The talents that the Lord has given us, that talent of free choice, right? That freedom of choice, that's pretty powerful. What you can do with that for good, what you, what you can do with that for bad. All these talents our Lord has invested in us, and each one he's expecting some sort of return. But also some spiritual talents, some spiritual gifts our Lord has given to each one. The gift of the faith, our Christian faith, especially all of us here in this room, to be a Christian. That's a huge investment that our Lord gave to you that he hasn't given to everyone to know all his teachings and to be entrusted with those teachings. And the fruit that he's expecting is that you would pass those teachings on to someone else, those teachings on to someone else. That gift, that talent, that treasure of his, which he's given to each one of us, the gift of the sacraments, Holy Communion, our Lord gives it to you and how many times you can receive it, the fruit is expected. He's invested in you. He's given it to you over and over and over again because that's more that he's given to you because he knows he'll get more in return, hopefully. The gift of going to confession. To have a second chance and another second chance and another second chance. And why not to maybe bring someone with you to share that gift? The spiritual talents. You discover all these talents. For what it's worth, as a human being, you discover these talents. You didn't invent them, right? You realize the first reality is that you were given them. You received them. You didn't give them to yourself. God gave them to you. They were a gift. And they were for you, but also through you for others. Our Lord's looking for a return to his investments. So we're talking about investments. Let's talk a, bit, a little bit about risk. Because to invest in something is to take a risk. And we start with our Lord first, right? Picture our Lord in Gethsemane, right before his agony in the garden. We've said this before, right? He struggles. He's in agony, right? That's why it's called the agony in the garden. He's in agony. He's going back and forth. He even, even prays, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. But not my will, but your will be done. And in that moment, you know he's going through each one of our names and our faces and our struggles and the moments we were going to take advantage of the grace and it was going to be worthwhile. What else was going through his head? The moments we were not going to take advantage of his grace. And that blood of his was going to be spilled not on our hearts, but on dirt as we turned away. He took a risk. He knew that you might bring him glory. I might bring him glory. I might bring him regret. I might even use the very talents he gave me, my intelligence and my freedom, and turn against him and turn others against him. Let's think about if you Google, you know, not as you Google, does God exist? There's so much out there, really creative, engaging, just not really well thought out, text or videos about why God doesn't exist. All that talent used against God himself to lead others away from him. What a risk. And he took it anyway. He looked at each one of us and each one of our brothers and sisters and he said, you are worth it to me. I will do it. So God has. He's taken a risk. He's entrusted much to each one of us, just like he entrusted a lot to those three servants. And he asks us to take risks for him. First of all, risks in stretching ourselves and how we develop those talents, but also risks in how we share those talents, how that investment can bear more fruit for more people. Do I push myself? Think about the human talents, the, the music, the art. Tansy, how long have you been playing piano? Since I was four. Since you was four. I, I have to confess, since you heard me say this earlier, I have super piano fingers. I have like a nine key stretch. When I was little, my mom asked if I wanted to play piano or if I wanted to do lessons. I said no. Then she really encouraged and insisted. I said no, and I got mean about it, so she left it. I'm going to get to heaven, and God's going to say, what did you do with that talent? I have no excuse. That's made my purgatory, is to hear all these beautiful piano players, and my fingers are useless. All they're good for is like measuring my hands with some, some little kid, and he's always like, Father, wow, you got these huge hands. You have huge hands, too. Anyway. So our Lord asks us to push ourselves to take that risk. Risk, right? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Same thing with spiritual gifts as well. We need to stretch those gifts. 
in our human gifts and the virtues he's expecting of us, that honesty, that integrity, that generosity, that compassion, all those things, he's expecting fruit. He had the seeds, now develop those seeds, bear fruit with those seeds, change the world with those seeds. Don't just sit behind the Xbox with those seeds. That's not okay, much less your, you know, everything else that you could waste it on. I'm all for Xbox, but too much is too much. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I want to say, when it comes to risk, you also have to talk about fear, because that's the one thing that keeps you from investing, right? I'm afraid of what might happen. So let's talk just for a moment about fear, because it does get in the way. Our Lord says two things. He talks about it directly, really, in the parable. The first thing you notice when he taught, when it's describing how he gave to the servants, he gave what? To each one according to their abilities, which means he's not going to ask of you more than you can give because you haven't been given more than you can give a return on. But give a return. That's your first starting point. Like, I know I can do this because God gave it to me, so I need to develop it. And if I'm afraid of doing so because I might fail, jump at it. Jump at it. Jump into it. How many times we, we start a club and we, we quit because it's hard? Well, push yourselves. Push ourselves. Another thing about fear is what we learned from the last servant, the foolish servant. And he goes up to our Lord and he says, well, I was afraid, so I buried your tre treasure so no one would steal it. You would think that was smart. But at the same time, he says, because I knew that you were a demanding servant, you gather where you did not even scatter. You harvest where you did not even plant. What does that mean? Our Lord, even where you see no possibility in front of you, if he asks you to do it, do it. Because he can gather even what he didn't plant. He can scatter or harvest what he, even what he didn't plant. Like St. Peter in the boat, right? Our Lord says, walk on the waves. And you're like, well, you can't do that. I'm a human being. I'm not a fish. I'm not whatever. And nevertheless, Peter puts his faith in God, walks on the water, for a little while at least. And our Lord sometimes says, I'm I want to stretch you. Let me stretch you. I want to stretch you more than you're comfortable with. Outside of that comfortable boat, let me stretch you. In how you develop your talents, human talents, spiritual talents, and then how you share those talents with others. For what it's worth, our human talents are often the means, the channels through which he wants to share, especially his spiritual gifts with others. Your art, your intelligence, your way of speaking, speaking in public, right? Who likes to speak in public? Anybody? No, right? You would think I do, but I really don't. So all those gifts that he's given us to, to develop, to share, to overcome our, our freedom, our fear, rather, overcome our fear, which you have freely received, so freely give. And this one last point, because especially when it comes to sharing our spiritual talents, the gift of our faith, the gift of the church's teachings, the gift of the sacraments, gosh, you know, like actually inviting somebody to go with you to confession seems like the weirdest thing you would do, the most anti-date question, right? Want to go to the movies and confession? <laughs> Wouldn't work, would it? But give it a try, you know, because I'll, I'll, I'll share this little quick story. I mean, a lot of times we, we especially in our, again, our first world church, you know, very, like, private faith, you know. I don't want to stand out for my faith in Jesus. That would be terrible. So I'm, I'm, I'm at a wedding rehearsal last weekend. I think I shared this already with some of you, but um, I'm at a wedding rehearsal, and, re and the rehearsal dinner is at the Palace Cafe. So I, somebody says, well, why don't you park at the Marriott? Well, that works out well, because two years ago they lost my keys. So now I get to park there for free. It's kind of a good deal. So I park at the Marriott, and I'm going back to get my car after the rehearsal dinner. And there's this lady outside the front door, and she's sitting there. And as I'm going to get my keys, she stands up and looks at me, and she starts talking to the porter, the guy at the door, about, she's looking at me, like, asking him to look at me. It's the most awkward feeling. And she's, obviously, she's asking, like, is that a real priest? As I got closer to her, she, was, she came up to me, and she says, are you a real priest? Because, of course, you know, this is, this is New Orleans, and all sorts of costumes come out of the woodwork. So, you know, are you, are you a real priest? And it dawned on me that, you know, I can't really prove, I don't have an ID card with photo ID, yes, you know, priest of the archdiocese. We don't do that yet. Um, all I had on me, and before, I mean, I really didn't know where this was going. She was coming from a party, I don't know if this was a good or serious conversation, or if she was joking or whatever. So I just, I, I reached in my pocket, I have my, my stole, my purple, you know, the stole what a priest wears, especially for confessions. And I said, well, I mean, I have this, I don't know if that helps. It didn't help too much, but she kept talking, and when I talk about talents, like our Lord, some talents are opportunities, the opportunities God puts in front of you. 
whether you take them or leave them. And for what it's worth, I just kind of felt somebody nudging me in my head saying, wait. Because I realized she was the one prolonging the conversation. My car was there and I was ready to leave. But she wanted to talk. She wanted to ask something. So she was, whatever. So I said, well, let's go for broke. So I said to her, when's the last time you went to confession? And she said, now I know you're a priest. <laughs> and she started crying. And we talked for another hour. She left very happy. I got to go home. And it's just the way God puts opportunities in our lives. Now, yes, it's a little different. I'm a priest. I wear the priest outfit. There are going to be a few more for me, but there are going to be lots for each of us. Everyone in this room, you are a Christian. You carry that gift in vessels of clay, but you still carry that gift, even amidst your own brokenness. Share it. It's a little light, a little spark in a world that, let's face it, look at the headlines. It's full of darkness. Don't keep it to yourself. And those other gifts that our Lord has given you, and those habits and abilities and, and interests and art and music and ballet even and dance and fashion and everything else, all channels through which you can share, especially the spiritual gifts. And at the end of your life, our Lord comes to you and hopefully he says, well done, good and faithful servant. I gave you five, you produced another five. You were faithful in little things, little opportunities. I will give you great responsibilities. Come, Share your master's joy. That's going to be the greatest feeling you've ever imagined and beyond the greatest feeling you've ever imagined. It's worth waiting for. It's worth making that happen. One last thing. Our Lord's given us, especially first world church, right? American USA church. He hasn't given you one talent. He hasn't given you two talents. Most likely if you're here tonight, he's given you five talents. Whatever it is, whether it's your gifts, your abilities, your opportunities, your finances, etc. Your you know, just think about it. A lot of talents. And a lot of times we develop a few. We go to Mass on Sundays every now and then. We develop, develop a few things. We go through Catholic school. And we're like, check, I did it. That was two, but he gave you five. So reflect on that. Especially as we are on the threshold of the Feast of Thanksgiving next week, we do want to ponder, what are the gifts God has given me? The talents God has given me? All of them. They were gifts for me, and I can really appreciate them. I can really thank God for them. But they were also investments in me that our Lord wants to bear fruit. He took a risk in wanting me to be and with all the gifts that he gave me. For what it's worth, we are going to have a little table before Thanksgiving, I think. You can put your gifts and your bread and wine, whatever else, for Thanksgiving, and we'll bless it at some point. But just take to heart, what are the gifts God has asked me to bear fruit with? And as we go through this Mass and finish our, our ceremony, because, gosh, I've already been talking for at least 15 minutes, um, Think about that, like offer it. We offer all those gifts back to the Father, just like Jesus. We offer them in union with Jesus, who everything the Father gave him, including his life, he gave back to his Father. Even the gift of time, right? The time that you're given and trusted in you, that gift. Our Lord was looking to see, well, how are you spending it? So we ask the Holy Spirit, we ask all those who've gone before us to help us, because that is a very painful question at times, a very challenging question. But this is what it's about, especially the whole liturgy today she kind of gets under our skin because what? Time is passing. The gifts that he's given to us, maybe we haven't always used them to the best of our abilities. Maybe we haven't always developed my piano skill or whatever else. And it's not too late, especially the spiritual gifts. Study your faith, know your faith, know why we do what we do, and bring that faith and those gifts and the sacraments and all the other gifts our Lord has given you and through all the other gifts our Lord has given you to someone he's put in your life. Amen.